We still don't have a definitive answer for why the equivalent of two military divisions occupied Washington, D.C. for the inauguration and why 5,000 troops still remain. Can we get an answer on this? Will somebody tell us why we do not want to normalize American troops in our cities? FBI Director Ray said they're monitoring threats online that showed armed riots would descend on D.C. and state capitals all over the country. Well, we didn't see a single riot on Inauguration Day. Not one. Well, I mean, besides the riots in Oregon from Antifa so and Seattle, why are we still seeing the troops patrolling Washington? Are they, are they waiting for ghost riders? Ghost rioters. Is that is that what it is? We were talking about this uh, after the show yesterday, and in the middle of this uh, production meeting with my producers, an email came through from the Department of Homeland Security. It is their first national terrorism advisory under the Biden administration, and it is the first um, it is the first national terrorism advisory. Since our action with Iraq, I'm sorry, Iran, it went into effect yesterday at 11 a.m. Here it is. I'm going to read it verbatim. The acting secretary of Homeland Security has issued a national terrorism advisory system bulletin due to a heightened threat environment across the United States, which DHS believes will persist in the weeks following the successful presidential inauguration. Information suggesting that some ideologically motivated violent extremists with objections to the exercise of governmental authority and the presidential transition, as well as other perceived grievances, check out the last part, fueled by false narratives, could continue to mobilize to incite or commit violence. Do you see where this is going? Extremists, extremists, and false narratives. All right, extremists are going to be identified on, on, on broad terms. This is, this is why we said... Patriot Act, really bad idea. Because all they have to do is relabel you terrorists. And everybody mocked that. I'm not going to be labeled a terrorist. I said, you, you don't know. Remember, the Constitution protects you for the future. It's not the guys that are necessarily in office today. You hold these truths to be self-evident, and then you stand as a guardian and a sentinel around those truths Even if you have a great guy or a great group of people in Washington, because you don't know when conditions change who people will vote for. And it is only the Constitution that stops those people from becoming dictators and becoming a destructive force for freedom. Well, we're here now. Um, extremists being identified now in a broad and vague way and the false narratives, whether from social media, news networks, podcasts, or anywhere else they'll find them, will be shut down. Now, reading through their examples of domestic violent extremists, see if you can think of who they might be looking at. Here are a few that were mentioned. Uh, domestic violent extremists that have an opposition to immigration policy, have anger over COVID-19 restrictions, are angry over the 2020 election results. If you fall into any of those categories, you are now a person of interest for the uh, federal government. Is that, is that right? Is that what we're doing now? This advisory lasts until April 30th. I bet it gets extended, but they say it's going to last until April 30th. Stu, I brought in a chair from the Mercury Vault. 
This is a chair my wife uh, won't allow me to have in the house, and I don't even want it in the house. I bought it for one reason. If you're watching us on Blaze TV, let me just explain it. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a, a stool that you would find at a table, like you remember the old show Cheers. You know, it's just a wooden chair. You've seen one like this a million times, except on the arm uh, rests, there are leather straps. This is obviously a chair where if you sit down, somebody is strapping you in and you're not going anywhere. It's what's underneath the seat that is important to me. Show the underside of this seat. And I don't know if our cameras can zoom in uh, tight enough, uh, but you will see the German Iron Eagle. And, it, and in German, it roughly translates to the Department of Homeland Security. This chair was a chair for those who uh, were persons of interest. When the Germans got together, and thanks to, when the Germans got together uh, and decided that they had domestic terrorists... They wanted to make sure that they sat there for that questioning. Now, I am not saying that that's what's happening with DHS. I'm saying that's what can happen. We have to learn from the mistakes of the past. And we have to all be very, very careful. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to exercise this power. Because if you're not in power, you've set the precedent and the next side will do it to you. We are not a country that does this to each other. I mean, it's amazing. The two biggest things that have happened this year are two things that have split our nation apart. And yet, I believe we are almost unanimous in our condemnation of it. What are the two big events this year, Stu, that have split us apart that we were unanimous on? Uh, George Floyd. Uh-huh. George Floyd. Everybody said the same thing. Really that bad. Horrible. Mm -hmm. Horrible. Okay. What happened? It was used politically, and it split us apart. Right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, and I, re I remember it wasn't that long ago, even though it seems like 100 years, it wasn't that long ago this summer that we were all saying, we agree. We agree. Why are you looting cities? We <laughs> agree. Stop the violence. Stop the violence with bad cops. Stop the violence of destroying property. Quick thought. Maybe even if we disagree, you shouldn't loot cities. Yes, That's just a quick, I agree. That's a random <laughs> yeah, thought. I yeah, agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So... Uh, what was the next event? What was the other event? There's a couple that popped to mind. I mean, obviously the January 6th thing, potentially. Mm -hmm. um, you could, also, I think, argue with the uh, coronavirus, right? I mean, yeah. you know, there yep. was uh, people agreed that we all want that to go away. Right. And then it used to divide us. And then it became political, mm -hmm. which is clear now because all of a sudden when Biden gets in, he's doing exactly the same plan as Donald Trump was doing. They're touting the same exact uh, uh, cure, if you will. Um, they're not moving any faster. In fact, now there's just a bunch of red tape, and it looks like it's slowing down. Uh, and, and all of the cities in the states that were so draconian are now saying, oh, you know what? We need to open up. This whole thing we agreed on. We just, it became political, and then it went to, into a nightmare. And the last one, the one I was thinking was January 6th. What happened in the Capitol, we all disagree with. All of us. 99%, I will bet. All of us disagree. We think it was horrible. Shouldn't have happened. I don't want it to happen again. And I'm fine with those people being arrested and going to jail. And yet... All of those who voted differently are now being lumped in with those people on the Capitol. No, that's not who we are. And it is time for reasonable people.
to have reasonable conversations. We're entering a very dangerous place, and reasonable people need to start coming together. Yesterday, um, I told you about Peter. Peter, what, what was his uh, last name? <laughs> Pe- Peter Von Ham? Peter Von Ham. He actually tweeted again uh, yesterday. I, I want to have this guy on the show. I d- vehemently disagree with him. <laughs> I, think, I think what they're doing in Davos is extraordinarily dangerous. But here's what he tweeted. Glenn Beck just responded to this thread in his radio show. Glenn, thank you. Thank you for the dialogue, each via his own channel, for letting your listeners hear the other argument and for being respectful and funny. Great pronunciation of my name. Well, Peter Von Ham. (laughs) This is the kind of conversation that we need to have. Now, I don't know anything about you, uh, but I will do my research on you. And if you are a really, truly reasonable person and we just disagree and you're an honest person that will ask and answer honest questions, because I know I will, we can have a dialogue. We must have that dialogue or this grand experiment is over.